Hello, everybody. Welcome to Northern Life. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am. I'm so excited. Hopefully, uh, Seth turns our microphone down a little bit. I'm a little bit too excited. But uh, we're on this Thursday here, Friday yeah. Eve here, almost the weekend. Very, very close. It's yeah. been a fun week so far of activities and uh, very fun stuff throughout the whole time. I Isn't love how me? excited you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so keep me going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Trying to get through the end of the week yeah. here with the excitement. Let's go. Who needs coffee when we have Hunter McCullough here? Dose of Hunter. <laughs> oh, well, coming up to Today, we've got a lot of Dose of Hunter to keep us energized. <laughs> we've got a number of awesome Halloween stories to share, too. Plus, there's a new survey out on just how many Americans really can't stand candy corn. Oh, that's a polarizing subject. It sure is. We'll have to see who loves it and who hates it among us. And as my father says, we have some edutainment to share on this Thursday. We're getting cleaning tips from the Queen of Clean. So we all love our travel mugs. Maybe not me. We'll talk about that later, especially with colder temperatures now. So we're getting some life hacks on how to clean those stubborn thermoses. Oh, man, that's yeah. actually a really good topic because I often find nastiness inside of my mugs. I don't know about yeah. you guys. I feel like there's definitely some mold somewhere in my, <laughs> my mugs. Uh, I got to do some deep cleaning. Listen to the cleaning lady. Yeah. Yeah. Queen, queen, <laughs> queen, of clean. queen of clean. Especially there. as they're hanging on your car for however long. <laughs> Now let's get into more of today's talkers. Even if you're bringing your own coffee to work with you, working full time at the office is probably going to cost you some big bucks anyway. Because according to a new survey from Owl Lab, 66% of U.S. employees who return to the office to work full time spend an extra on average of $51 every workday. Those Man. expenses being gas, parking, breakfast, lunch. Meanwhile, 49% of workers found it is easier to maintain a work life balance when it comes to having a remote yeah. job instead. Well, that's sure true. Yeah, <laughs> having I mean, a little more time to maybe get your laundry done if you're working from home mm -hmm. on your yeah. lunch break or something. But I have never seen a number tied to the amount of money I'm spending just going into the office. I don't know if I like to see that $51? So yeah. My gosh, that's hard to believe. With my it long is. trip, maybe. Maybe right. you'll like well, a 30 minute drive I was going to say, yours is probably the most expensive. It yeah. probably is. It oh. might even be over $51. How often do you fill up on gas each week with, with the back and forth? Once every couple of days, oh, something okay. like that. So at least a couple times a week that yeah. I'm filling up. And I've got a I've got a truck, so it's a large tank. It's always expensive, and it'd be nice to work from home someday. But I don't know if you can you really do that. We did during the pandemic a little bit. A little I think. bit, a little yeah. tiny bit. That yeah. was that was kind of fun. Our but. chief meteorologist at the time, Adam Clark. You're right. Yeah, he ha had like a month's worth of time when he was forecasting from right. home. That was That's interesting to watch. Cool. Difficult to put together, I will say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad, yeah, that we were able to mostly spend our time here at the studio. Exactly. Uh, right. during the pandemic and I personally I think I just like coming into work yeah, and having too. the social interaction even if I am spending $51 a day which I don't think I am I hope I'm not or 51 <laughs> hours a week uh, yeah. at the, at the yeah. building yeah I briefly had a remote job and uh, I was just a terrible remote employee yeah. I mean, like, it's it's hard when you have so many distractions in the house so when yes. you're at work and you're at your desk you know people are different so I could see how people love it and how some people hate going to the Makes office. Sense. what was your biggest yeah. distraction uh you know probably the TV yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no they're Life. You have a big old, yeah, well, well uh, not yeah. at the time. But when you had a big old TV, like right in front of you, you go, well, you know, it'd be certainly really nice to watch that TV right about now. <laughs> so TV found its way on usually. Well, I suppose yeah. golf might have been a little distracting. Golf, uh, there, right? maybe. Tiger. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if you're not feeling super motivated on this Thursday, that's okay, because apparently some experts say there are a few benefits to being lazy. Hey, okay. According to those experts who spoke with Yahoo Life, if you ever feel guilty about being lazy, there are four positives to look back on. Lounging around can enhance your creativity, heighten your brain power, reduce burnout, and even bolster your relationships because maybe you're talking about those TV shows or movies you're watching when you're lounging. Sure. Uh, however, like most things, it's all about moderation. Uh, but when we do feel rested, we are more productive and successful too. Okay. So I feel good about those bullet points. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Next time somebody yells at me for laying on the couch, I'm going to say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm boosting my creativity. Exactly. I'm I'm wait, my, yeah, the creative juice is flowing. Let's right. get this thing going. I've never felt guilty about sitting on a couch. Love me a good couch. Give me the couch. That's the best. I know. And I think I always feel more refreshed too coming off the weekend when you come back to work and then your, your brain is a little bit more yes. raring to go ready yeah. to think. I know proactive. For, for my social battery too, like if yeah. I know I'm, I'm going to go out to an event and do something, you know, I got to, you know, wait a little bit at home and be like, okay, let's prepare. Yes. Hype yourself up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be tough with uh, with this social battery. Alone time is very important. You got to have your alone time. Yeah. You know, reach out. Right. And if, you're, all about. and if you're like me, sometimes being lazy by yourself, that's okay because dating experts say you should take this winter to date yourself. Oh. 
What? what? According to a dating expert from Match.com, instead of seeing a date-free night as a failure, see it as an opportunity to reset and get to know yourself better so you can get to know and appreciate the value of your time. You can put the phone down, recharge like we were talking about, and do something that nourishes you, who you are as a person. And so it's not just singles either. You can always read that book you've been wanting to tackle and then take that time to reconnect with yourself. That's yeah. again, it's all about the alone time. It's important to reconnect and yeah. kind of figure yourself out. That, I, I kind of like that statement. You know, it's I tough do. too when you get home, like I get home and I, you know, I love social media. So like yes. Instagram or TikTok, and then you might see, uh, you know, I don't want you guys to feel bad for me, but you see like other successful relationships. You're like, oh, you know, your classmate just got proposed to, oh, or right. you know, they're having a kid and you're like sitting at home going through your third hour of TikTok. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's not fun. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so, but yeah, it's like taking the time to say like, hey, you know, I'm gonna do something nice for myself. Yeah. I'm gonna order that sandwich or I'm gonna go uh, take a little stroll in the park, something nice like it that. It is those little things. Yeah, mm -hmm. you mentioned like the sandwich. That's something that, yeah. you know, that can feel special to you yes. and, and think about that. It is hard, it is hard to play the comparison game right. uh, on social media because it is always, you know, the highlight reel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Get that morning iced coffee you've always wanted. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Go to Starbucks or Dunkin' or your favorite local shop you and get that coffee. You never have to tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Treat find yourself. myself there. I'm like, find myself turning my car and I'm... <laughs> 50 statements on your credit card being like, that was a lot of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm energized. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Moderation, like we are yep, talking about. Exactly. Oh, well, hey, coming up, there's a Wisconsin haunted house that promises to give you nowhere to go. Plus, is the Northern Life team fans of candy corn? We'll tell you after the break. Welcome back, everybody. There are some people out there who love haunted houses, and more and more places seem to get really creative when it comes to Halloween. Yeah, no kidding. There's a place in eastern Wisconsin where they're promising to bury you alive during the season of spook. Take a look. We're the burial chamber. We should be burying people. Trapped is the latest addition to the burial chamber, a huge haunted house complex that has been open here in Fox Crossing since 2001. Burial chamber owner Matt Mars says it's his passion to create totally unique experiences. There's nothing that exists in the world like this, and so I had to come up with the whole idea basically just little by little. I would build and design, build and design, and it was a one-man show to put the whole thing together, and it kind of just, it happened stage by stage. And he teased that he has plans that will make the experience experience even scarier in the future. According to the attraction's story, visitors are volunteers who have arrived to rescue miners who got trapped in a collapse. To really understand it, I decided to go and get buried alive after a private tour of the complex. All right, here I go with the first-hand experience. I'm a little nervous. ball isn't that heavy, but the total is. Trapped is the word. Whoa. As the germ-resistant balls drain from the room that can fit groups of 30 people, I could move once again. <laughs> I was expecting more there. <laughs> oh, that was so, funny. Okay. So, yeah, big thanks to, uh, I believe it's Darby to uh, provide us that story, but she's like, wow, you know, they a lot of balls like they come from the sky and yada yada yada. <laughs> yeah. Apparently you could put you could put 30 people in that room uh -huh. and then so uh, she had the lights on for the story purposes, but I believe the lights are turned off for the actual experience. That makes more experience. sense. Oh, yeah, so man. It'd be a little frightening. Is, are those like balls that you would go in like a, you know, a McDonald's ball pit? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, would, I, I hope it's like that. I would assume so. Okay. Oh, it's a germ resistant too. Yeah. So germ I, don't know, I don't know what that entails. Interesting. But, uh, Actually, I don't, uh, easy to breathe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but you know, like next to airplanes, being buried alive is like one of my biggest fears. Like just picturing really? dirt, like being thrown on you, just slowly, I don't know, filling your lungs. It's kind of a negative thought, but uh, it's- <laughs> Are you worried it's actually gonna happen to you? <laughs> it is, a little bit. Oh no. A little bit, that's an yeah. irrational fear that I have. We all have them, yeah. Exactly, No judgment, exactly. but we, yeah, that would be terrifying. We'll, we'll be do our best to never uh, put you in that position. It's not a blindfold <laughs> coming up soon? <laughs> no, okay, thank you. No, hopefully not. But uh, haunted houses certainly have great decorations, but a home in New York was so good, 
They had to call the fire department in because check this out. Crews were dispatched to this house on fire and arrived to find it was actually just an amazing Halloween display. The Whoa. firefighters were also so impressed and likely relieved that they asked permission to take a video and share it on social media for everybody wow. to enjoy. Stop. I mean, that's uh, something right there. That is. I feel like that's uh, a <laughs> borderline right there. Yeah. That reminds me one time I was walking through my neighborhood and I saw someone had put around Halloween time like some red uh, um, substance on mm. the windows and I thought it was maybe actual blood Jeez. and I was like shoot that could be a Halloween decoration or <laughs> it could be someone's blood and so I was like do I call the police <laughs> I didn't <laughs> and it was there again the next day and I'm like well I'm either a horrible person <laughs> or it's a really good Halloween decoration and I, it was yeah. it was a good Halloween decoration because it is it came back years uh, again <laughs> yeah I wonder how many people uh, do like false call-ins because of like how good the setup is how yeah. good the decorations mm -hmm. are are. Mm -hmm. I bet there's quite a few that happen every single year. That's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I suppose they were pretty relieved when they got there. Yes. Man, well, south of that scene, a popular Halloween tradition is showing off thousands of pumpkins in Rhode Island. The man who owns this home here is taking things to another level. For 15 years, every single day, he's carving craft pumpkins using an X-Acto knife, and he's created a, th a house of a thousand pumpkins. Whoa. Every fall, he takes his electronic artwork out of storage and then positions them perfectly on his lawn. As for an official count, he says he's up to about 1,400 pumpkins. That is incredible. Super impressive. Wait, you said he carves them himself. I wasn't listening. With to an exact... <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Hunter's too mesmerized by the video, I think. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of, I think, um, maybe it's at the Minnesota Zoo. Mm -hmm. Down in the... They have that really cool display that you can, like, walk through. Yeah. Uh, but there's just tons of pumpkins really intricately carved. And, uh, yeah, this guy is on that level. Imagine, seems. yeah, yes. how much yeah. time that takes and how good that all looked. I don't know if you guys have carved a pumpkin recently. I know we actually have. But yeah. uh, it, speaking of well, uh, the tees enough. coming up, look at that. Yeah. Funny enough, it hey. is coming up on Monday. That's you won't want to miss our team try to carve our own pumpkins here. We even had our coworker judge to see whose was the best. So once again, that is coming up on Monday. We had a lot of fun with that. that but yeah, blast. it takes a lot of time. It's it very hard yes. to do, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. If you're not very good like me, uh, <laughs> at least there's another side of the pumpkin so you can turn right. it around and try again. We'll have Big more on that. <laughs> Before we get to break quickly, we do have to talk about a new survey that's out. The only proves what we probably already know about candy corn. The survey by TopCashBack.com pulled 1,300 adults and found only 44% of Americans like candy corn. And there may be a science behind it since candy corn has no contrasting flavors and can taste just like spoons of sugar yeah. to a lot of people. I'm fine with it. Oh, I love candy corn, yeah. especially mixed with nuts. It tastes like a, uh, a thing in a jigger. I forget what it's called, but it's uh, salt and nut roll. It tastes really <laughs> sure. good. good I, I don't like we'll it. We'll be back <laughs> after the break. Welcome back. One of the nice things about working with such a large network of other TV stations is that we get to watch stories from people like our does it work best friend, <laughs> Rachel Hackbar. Love she's, her. Oh, she's always the best. And today we get to introduce you to another awesome helper known as the Queen of Clean. She's going to show us how you can best clean your travel mugs, removing all that gunk and coffee residue. Today I want to talk to you about travel mugs. You know, I had quite an experience with a travel mug one time. I took a drink out of it and there was more in it than just coffee and I'm like what is in there so I took it home and I started to take it apart and oh my gosh I didn't realize all those pieces came out and I won't even bother telling you what all was in there but use your imagination it was nasty so today I want to show you how these things come apart and what you need to clean so the first thing is we have some of these great mugs that are out there now that keeps things hot for like 12 hours, 24 hours, and they're fabulous. But they have a lot of moving parts inside. There's springs, there's all kinds of stuff. So you need to clean them every single week with a good vinegar cleaning, and you need to use a brush to get down in there to clean it. So on any mug, once a week, fill it with hot water, put about a quarter cup of white vinegar in. And we use white vinegar because it's more acidic than apple cider vinegar. Let that soak even overnight, pour it out, rinse it well, and you're good to go. But don't forget to get a brush down in there. Now, how about this? This is a frequently used kind of mug. Do you realize that these actually snap apart? 
I didn't initially, and what I found in here was truly appalling, I can tell you. So take them apart every time you drink out of them and you wash them, you can wash these with soap and water and a brush. Now, these mugs are a little easier to clean because there's just a cap and a lid, but use a brush when you're cleaning it. Get down in there with your brush and clean that out, rinse it with hot water. Now, thermoses are a little different, and I wanna show you how this comes apart because I think you'll be surprised how many pieces it comes apart in. First, this comes out. Then, you actually have to take this part out. And you take off this band. And if you don't remember to take off this gasket, the stuff that gets in under there is truly disgusting. When you get this apart, you're gonna wanna take a small brush and get down in there. And don't be afraid to take all of these. Put them in a sink full of hot, soapy water and wash them every time you're using them. Some of them, like the glass one or dishwasher safe, I highly recommend it. So remember, weekly, fill them up with hot water, put about a quarter cup of white vinegar in and let it soak and check them out and see how they come apart so you can truly get them clean. I don't want you to have any nasty tasting experiences. All right. Well, that queen of clean's a nice lady, but I don't know what she thinks about just like running it under the water or maybe just like putting it in the dishwasher because realistically, that's what I'm going to do. Exactly. I don't even know if I own vinegar at my house. No. I might. Who has vinegar? I don't. I, I barely sure have don't. groceries. <laughs> I barely have cups. I barely have a house. I barely have cups. I barely make it to work on time. Yeah. We were talking about being lazy earlier why that's okay. I think I'm going to take the lazy way out of this one and Man. just rinse my cups. Yeah, I don't good know. good I don't to know. know. In case it's like last, you know, last resort, you gotta like really get after it. I know yeah. I've had some mugs like that, which are like in dire straits. Oh yeah. But uh, that's you know. when you just throw it out, right? Yeah, that's true. You see mold, <laughs> yeah, you see mold grow and you toss that thing out. Buy that's new. We're not cleaning that thing. But in my I'm, mind, it's never gonna be clean. Yeah, no, exactly. It's always <laughs> stained in my mind there. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back. Coming up tomorrow, I get to brag about being ahead on our football pick standings. You're Let's beating go. a dog. <laughs> oh, come on. And two humans. That's and two humans. I'm losing to a dog. <laughs> it's, it's really a shame. Yeah. But we also have another Top 5 Friday sharing uh, the odd or unusual things that make us happy. So that'll be interesting to talk about. Yeah. And especially the bragging part uh, for me. That's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. My lead in the league. We'll see what happens here. Your what? My lead in the league. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but I like I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was fun. I've never seen that. I need more of that. I've never seen that at a hunter, hunter. before. Yeah. Oh, Trying new things on the show. Are we a, are we a, we're not at Vikings Packers week, are we? That's no. 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 The That's Vikings a couple weeks. are taking okay. on the 49ers and the Packers are taking on the mm. Broncos, I believe. Broncos. Mm, that's an interesting game. game. Okay. Yeah. Before we go today, too, I had to compliment Hunter on his nice uh, shirt. Your nice uh, floral shirt. Oh, my shirt. gosh. Nice. Thank you. I said it before the show, but I really like your sweater, too. Thank it you. looks like cashmere. Or some thank kind you. Of I don't know what the fabric is. Is it okay to touch your sweater? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't ask him. I just felt his sweater before the show. It is a nice sweater. Yeah. We and Luke, we kind of match similar vibes. Your sweater's nice. very yeah. nice. Say, shout out Kohl's. Thanks for uh, providing it. Cold bucks. Let's go. Not sponsored. Yeah. Not sponsored. Not an ad. I had to pay. I had to pay big bucks. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. We can't wait to see you back here tomorrow. <laughs> Find some time to throw a line or just head outside to unwind. That's the life in the great north woods. Hike or bike, whatever you like. Get out in the day, enjoy the night. Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods. Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods. Yeah, this is northern.